Savvy Business Radio, drawing out the best from our guests with our host, Christina Nitschman. Our guest today is New York Times bestselling author, Christy Whitman, a highly sought after life coach with hundreds of thousands of followers and very practical, action-based approach to applying the laws of the secret. Today she shares her latest book, Quantum Success, Seven Essential Laws for Thriving, Joyful, and Prosperous Relationship with Work and Money. Find out more about Christy and her work at ChristyWhitman.com. Hi, Christy. Welcome to Savvy Business Radio. How are you today? I'm doing great, Christina. Thank you for having me on. Oh, yeah, betcha. I mean, you're a business owner that's been very successful, uh, multi-entrepreneur, best-selling author. You're on today to talk about your best-selling book, Quantum Success. Uh, Very important. We've had a lot of business owners on who are hugely successful, uh, multi-seven figures and up. And then we had a lot of startups who, you know, get started. And as you know, many of them do not make it to the five-year mark. And they're like, what happened? Why didn't it work? Well, they need to get your book and find out because it'll not only help their business, but their life. But before we go to sharing all those wonderful tidbits, share a little bit about your backstory and what brought you to being an entrepreneur and best-selling author. Well, you know, for me, it was about 21-ish years ago when I learned about the universal laws that I talk about in Quantum Success. And it completely changed my life because I felt like I was going through life, you know, struggling, struggling, pushing, you know, I had evidence of success in my life, but I didn't feel fulfilled by it. And it always felt like it wasn't enough. And so when I learned about the difference between lack and abundance, and I learned about how to really focus and why important, how, how important it is to focus um, because we're attracting what we focus on I started shifting my mindset and I started paying attention to the things I was saying to myself and to others. And I started, you know, allowing myself to get close to my emotions again, because I was so cut off from how I felt about anything. I was, I was very numb. And so all those shifts and changes really, and it was all in applying the universal laws all led to massive success where it wasn't like, okay, I have all these outer things that I'm, I'm, you know, I have, but I'm feeling empty inside, which used to be my situation. Now I feel very fulfilled and satisfied in my life. And I've been teaching what I, you know, applied in my life um, for the past 15, 16 years. Mm -hmm. I've been coaching for over a decade and have two New York Times bestselling books. And, um, you know, it's all because I'm being able to, apply these universal laws in my own life. And that's why I've created the successful business that I have because, you know, we can look at circumstances and situations and events and people and employees and all those things and get really knocked off by all those things. Mm-hmm. Or we can be the deliberate creator in our lives and decide how we're going to feel, what we do want, what we do want to experience, and then manifest those things. Yeah, it's amazing to me. I started learning, I think I told you before the interview, about some of the universal laws you talk about uh, with David Nagel. And it really it really starts with getting in touch with what is going on inside your brain, that constant inner chatter that is on autopilot a lot of time. You don't even realize the negative constant chatter. Um, from the point where, like, say you have an argument with your spouse and then you're anticipating when you come home and there's just negative chatter, well, I'm going to tell them this and blah, blah, blah. And they're probably going to say that. And you're having this huge fight before you even get home where you created this kind of uh, tension where it kind of just manifests that when you get home and you're already in that kind of negative. uh. So and realizing how much of a part you play in that, whatever part of your life you're talking about, whether it be your business, your job or your, you know, your your relationships. I love what you're saying, Christina. Thank you. Because all of our relationships start with us. They Mm -hmm. start inside of us. So what you're saying, like you just in the example of your husband or your spouse, you know, if you are inside of your own mind being negative, judgment, criticism, Mm -hmm. that first starts the whole entire seeding creation process inside of you. And what's inside must manifest on the outside. Mm -hmm. And that also includes, you know, what you have in your career, the things that you tell yourself, what you expect are going to either happen or not happen, Mm -hmm. whether it's good or bad or wanted or unwanted, that relationship that we have inside of ourselves with our own career, with our own businesses, with our Mm -hmm. own money, we have all of that that first starts inside of us Mm -hmm. and it must manifest on the outside as within, so without. Mm. And, And this is so interesting to me. When I first got started with business, it was actually through prayer that I felt God kind of 
lead me in this direction. But with so, like with so many people, I had expected, okay, God, if this is the direction you want me to take, then show me the how. Show me exactly what the picture is going to look like. Where am I going to end up? And how do I get started with no money in my bank account? You, you, I'm sure you've heard it. The number one thing is, well, there's no money in my bank account for me to get started. And it's like, no, 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 no. That's not how it works. Faith starts with you not seeing it first. First, taking the steps, and then it's laid out for you. And I found that a lot of the times the opportunities were right there, but I had to trust, go forward in faith, and step out in action before the how started to manifest bit by bit. What, what you're talking about is exactly what I talk about in Quantum Success, that it's really about alignment and then momentum. So mm -hmm. alignment is what you're talking about. Alignment can look like faith. It can look like positive expectation. It can look like, you know, really aligning the, your thoughts, your feelings with knowing that you are abundant and that there's infinite possibilities and that mm -hmm. you can really focus on the possibilities and your intentions of what you do want to create. And then taking momentum from that place. And we don't know, like we could create this really big vision for our careers. And that's what I take people through in quantum mm -hmm. success, as you know, but it's like, then what do you do? Right? What's mm -hmm. the how yeah. the first step will always show up and it might be make a phone call. It might be write an email. It might be buy a book. It might be hire a coach, mm -hmm. you know? So it's the first step. And when we hear that or see that or get some kind of sign communication from that aligned place, that is the correct and right step for an individual. It's not for every person. It's not a one size fits all, right? But it's like if we're taking our, the first step in our mm -hmm. own lives, the next step after that and the next step and the next step will be revealed. I mean, if I look back on 17 years ago when my first book downloaded through me, it was like I got up in the middle of the night and it's like, what am I going to do with this? I think I'm writing a book. Mm -hmm. And I wrote down everything I, you know, I read or, and, and, was, and was seeing for seven nights in the same time every night. Mm -hmm. And so the next step that came to me was contact uh, Terry Cole Whitaker because mm -hmm. she was the person I had contact with that was a publisher. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, if I would have just said, oh, I'm not going to contact Terry Cole Whitaker. She's too busy or she's too this or, you know, who am I to contact her? That would have cut off the entire flow. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. So I contacted, mm -hmm. emailed Terry Cole Whitaker and I said, how do you get a book published? And she said, go online and find a literary agent. I could have stopped myself then and said, well, I don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, but I, I, I literally Googled literary agent and this guy's face popped up and I saw him, Glenn Millette. I'm like, okay, so let me contact him now. Mm -hmm. And then I sub, you know, and he said, submit me what you have. I submitted what I have. So each and every step along the way mm -hmm. will show up, but we have to have alignment and trust. I was mm -hmm. totally aligned that whatever this is going to turn out to be, it feels good. And feeling good is always in a state of abundance mm -hmm. and is always in a state of alignment. Whereas most of us go to the, well, who am I? I don't know mm -hmm. how to do that. And that's coming from lack. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's really important to shift our thoughts from lack to abundance because mm -hmm. that's where our divine self lives. That's where alignment lives. And that's yeah. where the flow and momentum get to be created to create massive success. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, reading your book, I saw that you were in sales and you were doing well, but w it's when you start to apply these, these concepts where things just started to explode to the point where it looked like almost magic. And I've heard it before from other people like David Nagel. It seems like this can't be happening. This shouldn't be happening. It's not possible. Um, but it's amazing what's possible because like David Nagel says himself and, and for my own self, opportunities existed already in my life for those things that came up when I allow myself to be open to it. And, and sometimes when you're shut down to, oh, this isn't me, I'm not good enough, you know, I shouldn't be doing this, let me be smart, then you can't even see what's in front of you sometimes. It's when you open yourself up, as, as you say, become aligned to it, that all of a sudden, oh, well, here's the opportunity right here. Yes. You know, it's funny, uh, Christina, there, I don't know why this, this, uh, this uh, story is popping in my head, but when I first started out coaching, I would go and speak at the learning annexes. And I remember being in um, LA and there was this one woman that came into my workshop and she just had a chip on her shoulder. It's like, no matter what I was going to say, no matter what I was going to talk about, she was like, you know, yeah. there was no, and I even told her at one point, I'm like, if you're not open to this information, if you don't want to be here, you can leave. We'll refund you the money. Cause she was just, I mean, that's not true. And just arguing with me the whole entire time. So I was in the airport and I was feeling like, God, 
you know, just almost beating up on myself. Like, mm. what could I have done differently? I should have done that. I should have, which should is never feel good. Right. So I was, I was mopey and I had my head down and all of a sudden I was like, no, you did great. You did the best. You gave her the option. This is her life. You know, you can't create for everybody. And I started to lift myself back up and feel really good and started looking for the, what was good and right about what I did instead of what was bad and wrong that I didn't do or should have done or those kind of things. And as soon as I lifted up, I was like, oh, that feels so much better. Wayne Dyer walked right in front of me and I was like, oh my God. And then I saw on the, the next flight was Maui and I knew he lived in Maui now. Oh my God. So I got up and went over and saw Wayne Dyer and mm -hmm. had the most lovely connection with him, started my friendship with him right there in the airport. But my point to this is if I would have stayed in that place of not feeling good and sulking, I would have completely missed what just walked in front of me. He would have still walked in front of me, but I would have missed it based on my own state or mm -hmm. being awake and, and open and, and, you know, mm -hmm. looking for the, like the good instead of the bad. Yeah. And you know, I don't know if this has come about for you, but sometimes situations like just what you talked about will come about in my own journey. And will it, uh, sometimes I feel like it's not like a test, but it's like showing you now, here's everything you, you, you say you know. Now, how are you going to respond? Are you going to react? Or are you going to be in abundance, like behave in that way? Yes. And mm -hmm. I like to look at it as, you know, the world is full of contrast. We have so many varieties of things and experiences. And the more we can get clear on what we don't want and shift our attention from what we don't want and shift our attention to what we do want, we again open up to the possibilities. Mm -hmm. I like the example of like you go to this buffet and every single kind of food you can imagine is on this buffet. All mm -hmm. the foods that you love, some of the foods that you don't like. And you go up to this buffet. And for me personally, I'm not a fan of curry, right? So I, mean, I see all these beautiful fish trays and pasta dishes and desserts and I'm looking at everything and then I notice the, con I notice the curry and I'm like, why is curry on this buffet? Why does curry even exist? Why, you know, curry, 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 curry. Now my <laughs> focus is on what I don't want, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of all the other yummy possibilities. And we mm -hmm. do that in our lives. It's like yeah. this one thing gets our attention it's like the nail that just keeps, you know, getting screwed inside of us or, you know, nailed inside of us. It's like that thorn in our side. Instead of just don't look at the curry, look at, go back to the beautiful desserts, go back to the beautiful pastas and the beautiful seafood and all the other possibilities that exist. And when I remind myself of that, this is just what I don't want. So it's like, what do I want? What do I want? Why do I want it? That's always a huge question because that evokes the energy. Because mm -hmm. once you can uh, steer your attention off of, I'm focused on this is what I don't want mm -hmm. to what this is what I do want. And then you start thinking about what do I want? Mm -hmm. What is the why behind it? You're now in the frequency of that and law of attraction actually starts to get things moving provided you don't go, yeah, but I don't have it. You know, uh -huh. this is what I want, but now I don't have it because now you're splitting your energy. Mm-hmm. You're, you're kind of focused on, well, I want this, but I have this. And, and then, yeah, yeah, I get you. I get you. Now, when you were out there, you know, when you were starting this journey and you're at a sales career that wasn't maybe where you wanted it to be, how did you get in touch with the dream or the vision of what you did want and stay on that focus? I love that because I'll give you a perfect example. When I left corporate America, I was actually a sales training manager for a biotech company. I was making great money but I absolutely could not stand my boss. Nobody really could. He had three or four different people that did, you know, harassment suits against him and the company had to pay. I don't know why they kept him around. He's still mm -hmm. working there. Um, but he would just do the craziest things. And so I would, I knew that this was not my end all be all. And I knew that I wanted to be full time as a coach and have my own business. And so I would every single day on my ride in to work, I would list all the positive aspects about my current situation. I would say to myself, okay, this is awesome. I have nights and weekends free so that I can coach at night. I can go on conferences and learn how to build my business on the weekends. You know, um, I make great money so that I you know, can do the things that I want to do so I can take my extra income and invest it into the business that I'm creating. Mm -hmm. um, I have you know, so many vacation uh, days a week or a month or a year or whatever. And you know, I would look at all those different positive aspects. Mm -hmm. And then when he would come in and say something different, I would look at someday, 
I'm going to be my own boss and I'm going to make my own decisions and mm -hmm. I'm going to be able to be treated this way. And these are the things, these are kind of clients I want to be around. Mm -hmm. I would, the best place to be, especially when you're in a negative situation or a situation that you don't want to be is being satisfied for what is. So looking for mm -hmm. the positive aspects and then looking and getting excited about what's coming ahead mm -hmm. because you cannot attract what you want from a place of, of negativity or lack. Mm -hmm. It's a two totally different vibrations from lack to abundance. So if I was stuck on, ugh, we call them the eagle. If the eagle was always looking over me and I, he's, he's affecting my mood and he's doing this and he's doing that, I'm focused on what I don't want. So instead, mm -hmm. I keep my, my attention away from him and look at all the positive aspects of my current situation and then get excited about what I'm creating in the future. And that, and that's great. And the one thing I've heard from a lot of people is you'll say to them, so what do you really, really want? And a lot of times I want this mansion and a million dollars. And I'm like, but then you talked about the very important aspect of why, because there's not a big why behind it, a real, real reason of why that would just make your life better. And, and David Austin says, what would be the amount of money or what would make your life look totally different where you'd wake up and it's the life you want? And now write that down because I, I think sometimes we're told by looking at lotto winners that, oh, it's just winning a million dollars and getting to travel the world. That's it. And is it really? And here's the thing. Anything we want, it doesn't matter if it's a million dollars or a new car or a husband or it doesn't matter what it is to have a successful business. We want it because we think we're going to feel a certain way when we get it. And that's the key to understand that when you can get into the essence. So for example, it might be that you want a million dollars in your bank account, not because you want a million dollars in your bank account, because you think you'll feel secure or free or at ease, or you're, you're, you're mm -hmm. going after a feeling sense. So mm -hmm. whatever that feeling is, start to cultivate, cultivate that feeling within yourself now and don't postpone your feeling of joy or happiness or love when it comes because what's also going to happen we are limiting the divine when we're saying joy looks like that and i have to have that in order to be joyful or i have mm -hmm. to have that in order to be successful you are taking the whole entire literally world of infinite possibilities and putting it into a very small narrow focus mm -hmm. and when you can be in that space of i just want to feel free mm -hmm. and you feel that essence of feeling free the form and what manifests from that feeling is infinite. Wow. And the possibilities are, I mean, are endless. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so true. People I've had on who've had massively successful lives or businesses. One of the things that it comes about is one guy said, you know, I had a certain idea of what a successful life or business would look like. And I was very in the box about what it would look like. And, but when I started to, you know, decide that, my end result vision or picture was really feeling a certain way or being a certain way and let go of how it had to look exactly like this, I realized my life is way more abundant or beautiful than I could have ever imagined had I just had to be, it just has to be like this, exactly like this. And then we think the, the steps to get there have to be just like this. And then we shut off, well, you know, sometimes you have to go through this back door we didn't, we didn't think about, you know, this back door, this other alley that, you know, could lead us there quicker or more abundantly or in a different way than we could have imagined. Yes. Yeah. We have to be flexible and open instead of rigid, you know? And yeah. The other thing I wanted to say to you too, because you were saying that sometimes people, when you ask people, what do they want? And I get those two all the time as a coach. When I ask, what do you want? Mm -hmm. They start listing all the things that they don't want. Because they're more focused and more clear on, I don't want to gain weight. I don't want to get caught in traffic. I don't want to go to work. I don't want to get a divorce. I don't want to, I don't want to be a single mom, you know? And it's, and when you hear yourself saying, I don't want to, I don't want to have, I don't want to experience, ask yourself, what do you want? What mm. do you want to have? What do you want to experience? Because it's in that question where the clarity comes and you can actually know yourself enough to experience what you do want instead of what you don't want. Because if you keep focusing on what you don't want, you're going to continue to create what you don't want. It's yeah. all about our focus. I mean, law mm -hmm. of attraction is always from a mirror reflection giving us, I, I like to think of it as a boomerang. What you're mm -hmm. sending out is coming back. Yeah. So where your focus is, is how you're directing that boomerang. Yeah, absolutely. And what I like is one gal sent me years ago, you know, creating your perfect life. She said, uh, put it down on paper and, and let's say today, because most people tend to think that money is the only way they can get the life they want. And it's not. It's a great tool. It really is to, to move things along and get you closer to what you want. But it's not the only 
way to build that vision or purpose in your life. But she said, okay, say that, you know, the, the amount of money, whatever it is for you, if you say it's 10 million, bam, it's in your bank account today. Show me the life. What does it look like? Focus on that. Show me that life. Put it on paper. What does it feel like? What does it smell like? What is it, what is it what, you know, when you touch it, what does it feel like, touch like, smell like? You know, just give me that whole picture. And it was, it was deep that way. And then she said, now, what would it really cost to live that vision? Which I thought was an interesting exercise because we all think about, okay, it would be $10 million or $1 million. Would it really? Because some people don't want a super fantastic life in New York City in a penthouse. Sometimes it's a nice little cottage in North Carolina by the ocean. And maybe that wouldn't cost $10 million. So she said, to now realistically plan, what would that dream life look like and cost if you were living it today? And it was really a really fantastic exercise for me getting clear. Because for me, I find it was $367,000 exactly to live that, you know, that perfect dream life uh, in that perfect cottage, you know, cause I actually went online. What does it cost to live here? <laughs> you know, but no, it really gets you a little bit closer to focusing on this is what it looks like. Now let's move in that direction. What is it going to take to get there? Absolutely. And it makes your mind grasp that, Oh, this is possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't seem like, cause the one thing I think is funny about a million dollars is people, Ooh, million dollars. Wow. But really, if, if you think of, <laughs> if you think about a lot of people working in corporate will make, more than a million dollars in, in their lifetime in their corporate universe. But we, we come to think of a million dollars as so wow out there. And, and really, maybe your dream life will cost more than that. But if you start putting it in units, like let's say, okay, what would you have to make per year, per month, or per day to reach that million dollars? It doesn't seem that far away. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. you know, you said something about money. So I just want to touch on that because we're human beings and we've all agreed you know, our ancestors all agreed that we have this thing called money and it's an exchange for one thing or another. Mm -hmm. And we've put so much meaning and, and it's such a, a word money that is such a charge for so mm -hmm. many people. And if you have a charge on money, if you feel like I want it, but, or, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I really want to be wealthy, but you know, whatever the but is, that but has been something that has been programmed in us. It's very unbounded part of who we are. It's not of our original nature. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, even in the, the Bible and the, in the biblical like thing of, you know, for the love of money, people have put and twisted and turned it so much into what that means. Mm -hmm. And so once again, it's like it, your own relationship with money is either repelling money from you or attracting money to you. Mm -hmm. And when you have thoughts of appreciation and gratitude for the money that you have and the, what money does in your life, what mm -hmm. you're able to afford, what you're able to do, what you're able to experience, you create an opening and an expansion mm -hmm. within yourself that is very attractive to money instead mm -hmm. of, you know, like really repelling it mm -hmm. away from yourself. I love that you went there because it's true. When I first started my business, my first goal was to make $100,000 the first quarter which didn't seem that big to me considering I made $50,000 in corporate. But a lot of my friends were like, well, who do you think you are? $100,000 in a quarter? Do you think you're special or something? I'm like, that's not a lot of money, actually. Uh, but it, it's interesting. It's just that, that cultural idea that, oh, you must think you're something special to want all that money. But at the same time, we're playing the lotto and hoping we win like a million or more. So it, it's kind of this dichotomy that a lot of people are living like, money's great, money's evil, money's good, money's evil. And yeah, it's that split energy. It's like you want it, but it's evil. Uh, but, you know, it's the same time when I first started my business and the first monies I brought in, I know some people were working in a shop, they get that first dollar and they, they frame it and they put it up there as our first dollar. Well, I remember the first time I made money in my business as a broadcaster and my sponsor sent me money, taking it out of the bank, I was like, wow, that's that's mine. That's my hard earned work. That's my, my gift, my talent, my used into the world to make the world. It just, it's a tremendous, abundant, wonderful feeling. And it, it wasn't a huge amount of dollars to start out with, but the, it's the feeling that that is my gift to the world. And I've been gifted back through this thing called money. Yeah. And one yeah. thing you said, and I want to just touch on this for, you know, for everybody that's listening is that mm -hmm. when you have a desire, when you have a dream, when you have a goal and intention, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. it's really important to be careful who you share that with because if you have someone that you know is going to be negative is yeah, not yeah. going to treat that little seedling because that's what it is you know when you have something that you just it's like you're birthing birthing mm -hmm. something and it's so super delicate I mean mm -hmm. if you just had a brand new baby 
a newborn? Would you just give this baby to anybody? Mm -hmm. You know, you'd be very discerning as to who I can trust, who's going to care for it, who's going to hold it correctly. And, and that's what we have to think about in our lives. Doesn't mean we have to be private and not tell anybody. I mean, I can tell my husband anything and say, you know, I've got this crazy idea and I'd love to do this. And he's like, if anybody could do it, you could, you know, mm -hmm. so I know that no matter what I share with him, he's going to be like, go for it. If I, I remember so many times, you know, saying to my mom, Ooh, I want to do this or I want to do that. She'd be like, yeah, right. You know? And it's like, why do I do that? You know, it's like, why do I hand over this precious infant to my mother when she goes, ah! you know? Yeah. So we have to be discerning as to who is going to hold the energy and who's going to hold the vision mm. for us. That's why coaches are so fabulous because mm. that's one of the things that they do for a client. If they're a well-trained coach is that they hold that vision for their client. And so that, you know, it's easy for them to see beyond the limitations that even the client has mm. so that they can help them move beyond. Wow. I love that you bring that up because when I first got started in the whole world of quantum success here that you're talking about in your book, I, it was all new concepts to me. I started joining this group in Central Park. It was a guy who was sharing these concepts and we were doing certain exercises and psychological exercises that were blowing my mind, just breaking the the bounds of my, you know, what I've told was possible. And I was so excited about it. I wanted to share it with everyone. So I'm sharing it with my friends and then my, my boss who had already built a successful, um, in corporate America, he had a side business and he built a successful business. And he said, why don't you just start your own business? And I, I, I not realizing in your passion and excitement, start sharing with your family and your friend. They're like, why are you crazy? That's nuts. Stay in a corporate job. It's much safer. You know, let's be realistic here. Yeah. And they mean well, but you're just so excited. You're like, I should tell everyone. Um, but, you know, I then learned that there were certain people like your husband and whatever that were ready to hear information, ready to be part of your journey with you. Like my now husband at the time was my partner. He, he was uh, totally like, oh, I don't know about this. But he is now jumped on board. We're both uh, changing our mindset and our gear moving forward to create a beautiful, abundant life even more abundant uh, than we already have. Um, but, you know, we now are, are careful who we share our dreams with and our vision because we know just that, that we don't want the poor baby to be, you know, thrown on the floor here. <laughs> Exactly. 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 And you talk about the importance of having a, a coach, mentor, someone who's been there who can actually not only you know, share you, um, share with you that new vision and help you stay on track, but also keep you accountable. Share the importance of accountability. I mean, we go most of our lives, you know, in school and, and whether it's if we have an athletic coach or a teacher in school mm -hmm. and, you know, college and everything. And then we get out into the work world and most of us don't have a very great mentor. We have a boss, but the boss a lot of times can be very demeaning. Or I was actually just watching horrible bosses the other day, cracking up and thinking about how many people have horrible bosses. Right. Um, and, and it's not like they necessarily have the right path or really know the formula for success. So when you have a coach like myself, you know, I've had coaches for at least 15 years. And it's one of the reasons, not the only reason, but it's one of the reasons that I've had continuous growth, continuous expansion, continue to be able to um, get clear on my visions and move, move towards because I'm human. I mean, I can get stuck in lack and limitation. And when I have a coach that says you're in lack, it's like, okay, it snaps me out of it. Mm -hmm. And it helps me be accountable and it helps me really focus. And if I don't have that, if I didn't have that, I mean, the growth and the experience in my own business wouldn't have been what it has been today. Mm -hmm. And I can see that with my own clients, that clients that, you know, are in their limitation and they don't know, we don't know we're in our limitation when we're mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. We just think that this is how it is. And so when you have someone that can open up your perspective to, well, that's one way of looking at it, but that's not, a, is it really true? Mm -hmm. Or is it just something that you've heard and you saw and that was your own experience? Are there others that are living a different life and are experiencing something different? Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, you know, it, it literally is all about conscious awareness and expansion. Mm -hmm. And when you can have someone holding you in that space of allowing you to go to a broader place, you know, then you, you expand yourself. Yeah, so yeah. for me, I mean, being a coach and having been coached and, or being a mentor and have been mentored um, has been one of the greatest reasons and one of the greatest things that I've done to create massive success in my life. Yeah. And every really hugely successful person I've, I've 
talked to, has had mentors, several mentors and in different part, aspects of their life. Like when you go to work out, you're not an expert in that. You hire someone who is and they help you keep on track with your fitness uh, goals. And the same thing goes with your business. Uh, for me, my first actual mentor was that, that person in corporate America who saw a bigger vision for myself than I saw. And I mean, there's not a lot of bosses like that out there in corporate America, but when you find them, uh, it's a tremendous gift. And he was for me getting me started and seeing that this was possible for me. And, and I, I'm forever grateful to him. But since that, that time of meeting him, I met so many great people that have helped me keep on track for my, my vision saying, you don't have to say so limited. There's a bigger, you know, vision that you can Absolutely. accomplish. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I want people to find out how they can get in contact with you today, get your book and work with you if, if you're available. And do you have open space for new clients? I don't uh, with one-on-one -on -one clients, but I do okay. a lot of group classes and things like that. But I do want to offer the book. It's a um, hard-covered book, and it's $26 uh, book that I'd like to give to your listeners for free. Oh, um, all they have you. to do, yeah, you're welcome. All they have to do is pay for the shipping, or I ask that you pay for the shipping. Yeah. So um, just go to quantumsuccessbook.com, and it'll tell you all the information. Uh, so it's quantumsuccessbook.com, or you can go to christywhitman.com to learn about either my coaching certification program or other personal development programs that I have available and um, work with me personally. The, the only way I really work with people now is doing, um, you know, in live, uh, out, you know, live events mm -hmm. or um, in-person um, group group stuff so well it allows you to re reach more people i mean when i'd heard tony robbins for years he was you know doing the one-on-one -on -one and and then when a video came into existence and he thought hey i could teach hundreds of thousands of millions of people with videos and now you know dvds and such that you can reach a larger audience and 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 really make that impact even larger through that these mediums it, it's just a great great source. And, you know, anyone out there who's not experienced uh, these ideas that we talked about today, you really, really want to go out there and get quantum success today. Because for me, it made the biggest difference. First, meeting that, that class I took in Central Park on the grass <laughs> many, many moons ago, about seven years ago now. And then my boss kind of propelling me, pushing me forward. Uh, sometimes if you don't have those people in your life, you, you really want to start to connect with the ideas and find people that can keep you on target of these new idea that might feel totally different from what you grew up with. And, that, and that's why you'll want to, you know, join Christy at one of her live events if, you know, after you get her book. So again, uh, share everyone where they can get your book again. Quantumsuccess.com or you can go to christywhitman.com. Awesome. Well, I just have to thank you again, Christy, for sharing your great wisdom today on Savvy Business Radio. Thank you so much, Christina. Appreciate you having me on. You betcha. Savvy Business Radio broadcasts worldwide via a large podcast network celebrating business owners, entrepreneurs, influencers, and successful individuals. Find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest. Call 732-474-7375 or email Christina at SavvyBusinessRadio.com.